The Jersey Shore is a wonderful place, but it's not exactly a place you would go to snorkel or scuba dive along a coral reef. To get to the nearest coral reef, you'd have to go maybe 500 miles away down off the coast of Florida. That is if you listen to the geography book or the Google Maps. Well, there's another way to see a coral reef, and that's going down to downtown New Brunswick, of course. There, Rutgers University has a living, breathing coral reef filled with wonderful sea creatures. You know, those creatures like Nemo and Dory. I'm sick of the Great Barrier Reef. I know where we can go. Where? Follow me to the best place in the world. All right, where? Hawaii, the Caribbean? No, even better, New Jersey. New Jersey? There are no coral reefs in New Jersey. There are now. Let's go check them out. Is what we're trying to create here is a, a similar an environment to the natural environment these corals are, are found in. Uh, so the coral take up about less than 1% of the entire uh, ocean floor, but are home to almost 25% of all known fish species. So you can imagine just such a tiny ecosystem uh, responsible for almost a quarter percent of, of all known fish species. Uh, juvenile fish will use them for shelter, you know, some, some fish do do prey on the coral. They create these giant structures that all sorts of fish can live in and, and survive around and seeing coral reefs decline. The local fisheries are impacted, the people then and the people are impacted so it's 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 a cascading type of uh, impact when we when we start seeing the decline in the, the coral reefs. One significant contribution to the coral reefs decline is the impact of climate change, specifically the amount of carbon dioxide absorbed by the ocean. Actually, right now we're focusing on, on, a, on a different aspect of uh, what happens uh, during um, well, global warming. The cause of global warming is higher CO2 in the atmosphere. And about a third of the CO2 in the atmosphere actually gets absorbed by the ocean, which sounds like a good thing and used to be thought of as a good thing, but what happens is when there's more CO2 in the water, uh, the water becomes more acidic. And, and that's not good because again, corals and other organisms, they have a very narrow window of conditions that are just right for the growth. And basically when the, the pH of the water goes down, there's, there's less material to build skeleton available for the corals. And, and the skeleton dissolves faster. Okay. So the balance is broken. But they have a, a symbiotic relationship with a single cell algae, okay. uh, zooxanthellae which for the most part is what provides the, the color to the coral. Bleaching is what happens when the coral is supplemented to different stresses, more usually high temperature okay. due to uh, sea surface temperature rise, and things like that. Right. Uh, those zooxanthellae, for some reason or another, are stressed out and are expelled from the corals, and which leaves the coral and, uh, with a white appearance. While they're in such a susceptible state, they're more likely to succumb to uh, infection or things like that. Rutgers studies are crucial for the survival of coral reefs, but they also have great potential for fighting cancer in humans. We found um, some compounds that grow in this soft coral here, which is called Xenia, that could potentially be cancer drugs used for chemotherapy. In one step, we determine whether a compound can be um, not only potentially um, kill cancer cells, but also in, in one step, find out a little bit about the mechanism. Well, looks like we found Nemo and Dory after all. Where else would they be but downtown New Brunswick? In Wild New Jersey, of course. <laughs>